Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Project One Ton. Uh, in the last video, I um, had an issue with the charging system. Uh, I believe the alternator is at fault, but it could also be uh, the computer. The computer um, controls the alternator. Uh, but first, let's say uh, thanks to everybody who's uh, subscribed to the channel so far. Uh, don't forget, when we hit a thousand subscribers, there will be a giveaway. And also, at a thousand subscribers, the channel uh, will get its monetization back. Now, the channel doesn't need the money, but that uh, revenue money uh, can be used to purchase uh, products for review. And then, in turn, for your support, be given away to you guys out there, the subscribers. So, uh, let's get into the video. All right, so in the last video, I tested the high power lead from here over to the positive post on the battery. Uh, now what that does is that tells me that the, the wire from here to the power box has continuity, that the fuse is good because power uh, continuity would have had to have traveled through it, and that the path from the fuse to the battery is good so that tested all that all in one shot without actually testing it individually now are the wires 100 good uh, that's hard to say but the pathway is there so if the pathway is there there should have been uh, more than just battery uh, voltage available so i'm going to pop the plug off uh, the back of here and uh, and show you what uh, what's going on with that So there's two terminals on this connector that plugs into the back of the alternator and they go to the uh, computer that's behind the air box here on the firewall. Now the blue, I don't know if you guys can see the color of these wires. I'll try to open this up. Okay, so there's, well, you guys can see, there's a, uh, a blue wire on the left and a, a green wire on the right okay now the blue wire is battery voltage from the computer and the green wire is switched ground controlled by the computer so what happens is the computer switches the ground and closes the circuit uh, which enables the field inside of the alternator uh, to generate power now if the computer isn't telling the alternator to come on it's not going to make any power so now that we know that uh, there should be 12 volts on the blue wire and ground on the green wire gonna need to fire grab the uh, voltmeter and and fire the truck up and test the blue wire uh, to battery uh, negative and if there's a voltage there uh, that is good and then reverse uh, reverse the probes and go to uh, positive battery to uh, ground on the green wire and if there's also battery voltage there, that means that the ground is functioning and the computer has tripped and is trying to complete the circuit and the alternator is actually at fault. So let me get the truck fired up, grab the voltmeter. Okay, so the meter set at 20 volts. I got uh, ground attached to the uh, other battery ground because uh, these cables are still all connected to the battery over there or to engine ground so this should work good now on the, uh, the blue wire here and I have battery voltage so that is good I'm getting a power signal from the computer now I'm going to switch these around I'm going to put the, the red lead here on the positive battery side over here. Hopefully I get contact. Now if I have a ground, a, uh, 
script ground or signal ground from the computer uh, on the green wire showing battery voltage then uh, the computer's doing its job so let me get on here and yes I do I have battery voltage so the computer is functioning and therefore the alternator is not okay so now the trucks off like I was saying that uh, that simple test determined that the uh, that the alternator is at fault here's where I'm at so far removed the air box from the turbo unplug the connector 12 mil socket take the high tension lead off um, I got a 3 8 uh, ratchet that goes in the, uh, the tensioner and I got a little bar to put over it and I just uh, rotate the tensioner back it's just down there and then slip the belt off and uh, unbolt the alternator so the old one it looks a little bit different than the new one but it's supposed to fit because um, there's a couple of different manufacturers for uh, the replacements you can get one that's uh, identical to this or you can get this one supposed to be I believe the Bosch one uh, and it just has this plastic piece on it instead of a metal piece but I think that's all the difference the the outputs were the same so see how it fits up now the new alternator is on so the old alternator had a 12 mil nut on the high tension lead where the new one had a 10 uh, other than that you need a 13 mil socket for there and the bolt that goes through the bottom under here um, the head end is also 13 but the nut end is uh, 15 you need a 15 mil wrench for it other than that unbolt it just kind of I just pried this up out of the way a little bit so I could pop it in and out, hooked it all back up just the way it came apart. So now we're going to hook the battery back up and uh, put the air box back in, fire it up and uh, see for sure if that was the problem. Alright guys, the moment of truth. Like they have about 12 volts on the battery. I don't think the grid heaters are working either. It's a long wait light. And there the gauge is going up, going up, going up, all 14. That's actually a little high. That gauge could be off. Um, the little booklet come with the, uh, or little paper come with the, uh, with the alternator said it was factory tested at uh, 13.5. So I'm gonna go with the voltmeter and we'll check what we got up under the hood. Okay guys, I hope uh, this little video helps somebody out and uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, till the next one, peace.